Hey guys, welcome to the latest Z Code System video here on YouTube. Drew speaking to you, and today we're going to cover once more Euro 2020 as we have games going on this week as we wrap up the group stage. Now, right now, there are some games going on. I'm hoping to get over to watching those on my TV in just a minute. We've got some big games, four games today uh, being played at the Euro 2020 tournament as teams look to punch their tickets to the knockout stage. Now, as you can see there from our headline, we're gonna take a look at games on June the 22nd. That's tomorrow, Tuesday, June the 22nd. And um, the big game going on there is going to be England taking on the Czech Republic in a massive game that England have to win to assure themselves of going through to the next round. So we're gonna take a look at that. And uh, you know, since the tournament started, and even before the tournament started, we've been covering uh, things here on Z Code System on the YouTube and as well as on our blog covering the tournament and it's been a lot of fun so far but we're about to get down to the nitty gritty 16 teams uh, will qualify for the last 16 and then we will be whittling teams down from there and we're going to continue to cover that here on the blog now today we're going to look at the soccer buddy tool as we typically do when we look at our soccer uh, predictions and picks but we're also going to look at the z code system playoff simulator and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that. Uh, if you've used the tools at Z-Code System previously uh, for, say, the NHL, NFL, Major League Baseball, you'll be more familiar with the playoff simulator. It's not necessarily something we use a lot in soccer because there are not a lot of uh, tournaments in which we have like a playoff style. This is one of them. World Cup will be one of them next year. So, you know, we'll, we'll have that then. Um, but we're going to look at that today. So, of course, as always, you can go over to the zcodesystem.com backslash blog, read up on what I wrote there, and check out anything else if you are you know, betting on any of the other sports that we cover on Z Code System, which we cover loads um, just on the blog. But even with the tools at Z Code System, we have even more that we cover. So you can check all of that out. Um, but let's get on to the Soccer Buddy tool to look at the two games for tomorrow. And you know what? Why don't we look at those games for Wednesday as well? Okay, guys. So there are the two games we have for tomorrow, June 22nd. That's a Tuesday. Uh, and those games will be played with a lot on the line for all four teams. Now, if we look at these games, they're going to be played simultaneously, um, eight o'clock in the UK. And uh, I guess that's what, three o'clock on Eastern uh, East Coast time in the USA. Now we've got England playing Czech Republic, and then we've got Scotland playing Croatia. The England game will be played at Wembley Stadium in London, while Scotland will play Croatia at Hampden Park in Glasgow. Now, both of those teams, England and Scotland, that is, should have uh, some home field advantage, some home field support. But as we've seen so far, that necessarily hasn't helped uh, with these teams uh, so far in the tournament. Now let's take a look at some hot trends, which we do not have at the moment. Um, but uh, let's let's go with that Scotland-Croatia game first. Let's go with that. Um, Scotland are coming off of a nil-nil draw last Friday night against England in a massive fixture that they nearly won. Uh, England, very poor in that game, uh, created very few chances and needed a late goal line clearance from John Stones to prevent Scotland from scoring and winning that game. Um, Scotland have one point they are uh what was it bottom of the table right now in uh in the group and uh they have to win they have to win this game to have any chance of going through which a victory could send them through as either uh, second place finishers or as the uh one of the four best third place teams at the tournament um they've got to win they've not played terribly bad even though they lost their first game 2-0 uh to the czech republic um they've been decent at the tournament they just are not scoring goals they haven't scored yet in 180 minutes of football now croatia they are not the team that we saw at the 2018 world cup i've said that before um this is a team that um has some talent but isn't necessarily that good. Uh, they conceded a goal to England in their first game, losing that game 1-0 in a very boring game, uh, created a few chances. Uh, they drew 1-1 with the Czech Republic uh, in their second game. After giving up a penalty to the Czech Republic in the first half, they were able to score in the second half to uh, to get a, a draw, thanks to even Perisic. Um, but overall, Croatia have done very little in front of goal. And I think this could be a, a low scoring game. Um, neither of these teams are scoring many goals. Now, to be honest, this was a group, uh, Group D, I thought that was going to have quite a few goals, but we've seen very, very few goals. Um, off the top of my head, I, can, I think there's only been four goals scored throughout this group uh, in the four matches combined. Uh, I, 
I, I hate to say it, but I like Croatia to pick up a win in this game, um, a very low scoring win. Um, I like Scotland, what they're doing. Um, I like, uh, you know, what they how they've played. They're playing really hard. Um, but I think that at the end of the day, there's going to be a lot of pressure on them to get this win. And, and I don't think they're going to be able to do it. I don't think they're going to be able to score the goals. And I don't actually like that 2-1 scoreline prediction. I actually like more of a 1-0 scoreline uh, with Croatia picking up the win to nil in this game. Uh, Perisic perhaps getting another goal, uh, maybe Ante Rebic getting a goal for Croatia. Now looking at that England game, England have to win to assure themselves of progression to the next round. The Czech Republic currently lead Group D. They've picked up four points. They've actually been very good, um, and I think they've surprised a lot of onlookers. I know they've surprised me because I kind of thought, uh, well, I didn't kind of think, I thought um, the Czech Republic actually might finish fourth in the group, but they have played pretty well. Um, they've scored three goals. They're the highest scoring team, uh, excuse me, they're the highest scoring team in Group D with those three goals. They've only conceded once and that came against Croatia. Um, now, take those three goals with uh, an asterisk because all three goals have been scored by Patrick Schick. Um, this team isn't creating a lot of goals and um, certainly no one else is scoring but Schick and that can ultimately be a massive problem for a team at a tournament when they rely on just one player to score their goals. Uh, if the Czech Republic can get goals elsewhere then they may be able to defeat or draw with England. Uh, cast your minds back to Euro 2020 qualifying in 2019, these two teams met two times in qualifying. Uh, England won the group and the Czech Republic only qualified for the tournament proper by going through the qualification playoffs after finishing second in the group. Um, when they played uh, in those previous mat matches, England defeated Czech Republic 5-0 in their first meeting in qualification, uh, but the Czech Republic won 2-1 in the second match of qualification for the Euro 2020 tournament. So... Anything can really happen in this game, and the way that England have played has been very poor. They're not creating chances. Uh, players look out of form. Harry Kane looks looks a shell of his usual self. Um, he's a shell of the player right now that that uh, won the Golden Boot at the World Cup in 2018. Um, Jaden Sancho was expected to uh, start this tournament. He's not even made the squad uh, for England's two games previously. And I don't think he's going to end up playing this next game. But manager Gareth Southgate really needs to do something. Now, England have uh, not conceded a goal yet at the tournament. And four points could be enough to see them through to the next round. Um, if they do draw this game, Czech Republic will qualify as group winners. Um, but like I say, if England um, can only draw, then that Scotland... Croatia game will have a major impact on which side goes through. Um, England do have uh, four points and uh, Czech Republic have four points, like I said before. Czech Republic are leading the group based on goal difference. So in actuality, a draw since both of those teams through. Um, God, this is a tough game to call. I could see this finishing 1-1 uh, between the Czech Republic and England, um, but I could also see England just just edging it 1-0 in this game. Um, I, I think the Czech Republic's luck could run out with Schick um, unable to score in this game, and uh, I think England can pick up a victory here in a very low-scoring, narrow game. I don't like that 2-1 scoreline like, uh, like the previous game. I think we could see more of a 1-0 uh, win for England, possibly a 1-1 draw. Okay, now let's look at the following day, the 23rd. So Wednesday, we're going to look at these games here. And we're going to have four more games. Uh, I've got my hot trends on, but no hot trends going. Uh, and we've got some games. We'll go a little bit faster through these games here. Um, the pick of the litter, let's see. That's going to be that France-Portugal game. France were tipped to win the tournament pre-tournament. Um, they have uh, stumbled. Uh, they could only manage a 1-1 draw against... Um, against Hungary uh, at the weekend. Um, it was a great result for Hungary and sets them up nicely to potentially go through to the next round. France have uh, four points from six possible. They beat Germany in their first game 1-0. This is a France team that is not scoring goals. Like England, a lot of talent, a lot of goal, uh, a lot of attackers, but they're not scoring goals. Portugal were shocked by Germany uh, in their previous game. Uh, they lost that game uh, following a win against Hungary. So this is a game that Portugal need to get a result from. They need a draw or a win. And, um, you know, I'm, I think France can actually pull this out because Portugal were 
awful uh, against the Germans, and I think France can pick up a win. I think this will be uh, a good game, a very good game. I like that 2-1 scoreline there uh, in this one, very tight, uh, tight fixture. And if Portugal do lose, we could see them actually not qualify for the last 16, which would mean Cristiano Ronaldo does not go on uh, to the knockout stages, and the winners, the reigning champions of the European Championships, uh, would be eliminated. Now, Go down to that Hungary-Germany game. That is the other game from the same group, Group F. Hungary on three points, Germany on three points after two games. This is a huge game. Uh, the winner will punch their ticket for the next round. Um, but again, that could come down to uh, that Portugal game. Uh Actually, I guess it won't. Um, the Hungary uh, versus Germany, the winner of that game should punch their ticket to the next round. So they would have six points from nine possible. Uh, Hungary, don't underestimate this team. They made the last 16 at the 2016 uh, European Championships. And um, this time around, they are very much long shots in this game against Germany. But we saw them hold their own against the uh, against the Portuguese. Now, a draw does them no good. They have to get a win in this game, and we should see Marco Rossi's team really push forward and go for a goal. Uh, Germany, they, you know, a draw could send them through, but that might uh, uh, hinge on that France-Portugal game. Uh, they do have a head, you know, they do have the better head-to-head -head over Portugal, so if those two those two teams finish on four points. Uh, the Germans should be the ones going through. Uh, and they also have a better goal difference than Portugal uh, after thrashing uh, the Portuguese uh, in the tournament previously. Uh, Sweden and Poland looking at that game. Uh, let's go back to the, the prediction actually of the Germany-Hungary game. Um, you know, I like Hungary to do something here. Um, and I think that they could go out and get a goal. But, you know, that 2-1 scoreline does look good there for the Germans. So I'm picking the Germans to get the win here and to punch their tickets. And this is a Germany team I didn't expect to actually go around, go into the last 16. Uh, but they impressed against Portugal. And I think they will just do it here uh, against Hungary. Sweden and Poland. Sweden are uh, a top group uh, E, is it? Uh, I believe it is. Uh, top group E. So they go into this game uh, on four points, having defeated uh, Slovakia and drawn with Spain. Um, this is not a team that's scoring many goals. They scored one goal over the course of their two games. And Sweden, um, that only goal, that game, or excuse me, that goal, that only goal that they've scored came from the penalty spot. So uh, I don't think this is going to be very high scoring. I think this could finish 1-1. Uh, if it does, Poland will go home from the tournament. They have to win to have any chance of going through. But um, I can't see them going through uh, the group. I think this will be 1-1. I like that scoreline uh, with Sweden getting through to the last 16. Now, group mates, Spain and Slovakia are going at it. Spain have been one of the most disappointing teams at the tournament um, in that category of Portugal and, uh, and England. Um, Spain with two points from six possible. They've drawn twice. A 1-1 draw with Poland was what happened last time around. And before that was a 0-0 draw against against Sweden. Spain are not putting away their chances. They're dominating games with possession, but possession does not win games. Uh, they're not converting their chances uh, in the final third. And I could really see Slovakia getting a draw in this game and sending Spain home. Three points will not help Spain get through to the next round. Um, they are currently in third in that group. And uh, in addition, that keeps them out of being one of the best fourth, uh, excuse me, one of the best third place teams. So I could really see Spain being eliminated here. This isn't necessarily a great Spain team. They've got a lot of talented players in the side, but coming together, they're not, uh, they're not, you know, they're, they're just, this isn't, this isn't the Spain team that we saw a decade ago uh, win two European championships and a world cup. Uh, this is a team that dominates possession, but doesn't really do anything with it. Um, uh, Luis Enrique is probably going to change up his uh, starting 11 uh, for the game. That may not make much of a difference. He brought in Gerard, uh, Gerard Marino uh, to play on the right wing last game, uh, playing him uh, and uh, Alvaro Morata and Danny Almo across the forward line. And, uh, you know, this team couldn't break down the... Uh, the Poland defense uh, and, and score goals. They did get one from Alvaro Morata, but he's 
uh, you know, flair to deceive uh, this this tournament. So uh, I could see Spain not getting enough goals and being knocked out of the tournament. Now I'm going to go with my uh, with this with a safe bet here, and I'm going to pick Spain to win this game. Uh, even though Slovakia did impress in their first game with a two one win over Poland, um, but I expect Slovakia to give up a goal or two in this game uh, because that defense is not necessarily uh, watertight. They've given up. Uh, two goals at the tournament so far while scoring two goals. All right, guys. So those are my picks for Tuesday and Wednesday at the European Championships, the Euro 2020 tournament. Now, very quickly before we go, let's take a look at one of our other great tools at Zico System, the Playoff Simulator. Okay, as you can see here, I've got the playoff simulator in front of us. And as you can also see that we have this used for NHL. We've got the NHL playoffs going on right now, the NBA playoffs as well. But we can use this for multiple sports. Uh, and recently, this was updated. The Playoff Simulator was updated to allow us to use it for the Euro 2020 tournament. Now, let me just make that a little bit smaller so uh, we can take a look at, oh, excuse me, uh, we can look at uh, these teams over here on our side, and we've got these different groups going on. So I'm just going to scroll down, and we've just set our upset level to average. So we've already got uh, two teams in the last 16. We've got Wales and we've got Italy uh, in the last 16. Italy have been brilliant. And I'm going to reiterate this. I put money down on Italy pre-tournament to win the tournament. And uh, so far, they've not disappointed. And they've become one of the favorites uh, after uh, after three games to win the competition. Now, I'm just going to hit simulate. Again, our upset level is average. And we're going to see what our prediction is, who, uh, which team, that is, will win the tournament this year, the Euro 2020 tournament. All right, so there is our prediction, and as you can see there right now, now again, keep in mind the final match day games are not finished. Only two teams have officially advanced uh, and know exactly what they who they will be playing or where they will be playing uh, in the next round. So we've got this going for us, um, and we've got a prediction of Belgium winning the European Championships against England in a game uh, that will be played at Wembley Stadium in July. Now, as you can see there, we've got uh, we've got Spain coming through. We've got France coming through. Uh, we've got a great derby <laughs> that looks like set up there between England and Wales. Um, now, again, keep in mind, this is just a prediction and a simulation of what is being predicted by all the different data that has been collected. Now, again, the final games of the group stage have not been played yet, so we can take that into account. And we can consider that next time that we run this, uh, which we can run again next week when we give our picks for the knockout stages. Now, just uh, just to do another simulation, let's have a look at if we have a low upset uh, a low upset level. So I'm just going to hit simulate again. I'm going to hit the simulate once more. And we are going to get a, another set of predictions based on the different data and the simulations. All right, so now using our low upset level, we have a different uh, a different prediction. We've got Spain coming through to win the European Championships in a game against the Netherlands. That would be a rematch of the 2010 World Cup, which was in South Africa. Uh, and this time with our low upset level, we do see Belgium getting knocked out uh, by Ukraine, uh, which would be a massive, sh uh, a massive shock to see Ukraine win uh, both against Italy and against uh, against Belgium. Uh, low upset level. Hmm. Uh, so let's take a look one more time. And we're going to look at the high upset level. And I'm just going to hit that. And I can go over to the Z code system, you can use this uh, playoff simulator for your Euro 2020 betting. And uh, you can it can help you make your picks for all of your individual match bets. And if we're using our high upset level, we are going to see England coming through playing Ukraine and winning the European Championships. And that would be quite an exciting uh, final for English fans. So guys, those are our tools. And of course, you can use those over at Zcode system. Now I've given you picks for six games coming up uh, this week, uh, those games going on on Tuesday and on Wednesday. So get on over to uh, Zcode system, read up about uh, anything else that I've written or, or all the additional information I've written, and then get onto your sports book to make your bets. And I hope you enjoy the games when they come to you. And as soon as we get those knockout games set, uh, those knockout games should be coming up this weekend. We'll get our next video and blog up for you to get your 
uh, get all the information on what we we uh, <laughs> on all of our picks and predictions for the games. Excuse me, uh, it's been a long day. All right, guys, have a great time watching the games, and we will see you next time here on Z Code System.